Hi everyone, Tom Wolf here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I created this digital kick and bass sequence in Yuhi Zebra. And Mod Wheel. Okay, so you can hear we've got this deep kick sound and we've got this tuned bass that goes with it. Um, it's quite a punchy kind of sound, very digital kind of sounding. Uh, this is one of the patches from my set Automaton for Zebra and the patch is called Machine Learning. So let's show you how I created it. So I've already taken the patch apart and you can see here we start with Oscillator 1. So Oscillator 1 on its own sounds like this. So that's where we're getting the kind of kicky sound from. On oscillator one, we've got a single oscillator. Uh, we've got it set to a triangle wave. And then we've got envelope two controlling the pitch of it. So the pitch is detuned. Oh, it's also worth pointing out that we this is not following the keyboard. So this is a single set pitch. Um, no matter where you play on the keyboard, the pitch is not going to follow it because that's what we want from this kick drum. We don't want it to be a tuned kick drum because the bass kind of does that sort of tuned element to it. So we've got envelope two controlling the pitch. You can see we've got no attack. We've got the decay very, very low, no sustain. So that is affecting the pitch quite quickly. Let's just show you the difference to that. So if we turn that off. That's giving us that kind of punchy attack to it. We've also got the wave set to reset, which uh, is what you really want when you're creating percussion. Uh, what that does is it means that every time the note is triggered, it resets where the waveform starts. So if you don't have that set, whenever you press a key, it can trigger from a different part of the waveform, which changes the sound of that initial attack. But when, you've, when you're playing percussion, you really want the sound to be the same at the start. So we've got the reset on. So let's switch on our filter. So now with the filter switched on, it sounds like this. So that's a lot more kind of kick sounding. Turn this up a little bit as well. Okay, so we've got this set to LP Excite, which is great for percussive stuff. We've got the cutoff set pretty low. The resonance about a quarter, no key following, no drive. And then we've got this being controlled by envelope three. So envelope three is controlling the cutoff and controlling how kind of fat that sounds really. So on envelope three, we've got no attack again. We've got decay about a quarter, but it's a little bit more, not much, but a little bit more than our pitch is being controlled. And then no sustain at all. So let's hear how that's controlling it. So you can't barely even hear that without it. There we go. So that's allowing us to get this kind of deep punchy kick, but with a little bit of top there as well. So then we'll look at uh, our next lane. So let's unmute this and let's look at VCF2. So VCF2 the feed is coming from our input. So it's coming into VCF2 after we've had the oscillator and the first filter, um, but before anything else is happening further down the first lane. And on VCF2, we've got that set to decimate. Now, in Automaton, decimate is sort of like the secret source of it. Uh, it creates the character of a lot of the set. So this kind of gives it that kind of crunchy digital sound when we switch this on. go on its own so that's just giving us a little bit of crush on that kick we don't want all of that that's a little bit too much it and it doesn't really sound blended to sound it sort of sounds like it's just happening on its own at the same time so we're gonna switch on vcf3 so vcf3 is set to an all-round low pass we've got the cutoff set pretty low again a little bit of resonance there and the key follow and driver both off and then we've got this being controlled by envelope four so without 
So that's giving us this really kind of resonant um, sort of top to it, which is giving us kind of a lot of the body for the kick as well. And then we've got envelope four set to a relatively long decay compared to the rest of them. And of course, no attack and no sustain as well. So let's hear it without the envelope. It's about there. Okay, so then this sound is coming back into our lane one, but I'll show you that in a minute. First, I'm going to turn on oscillator two. So oscillator two is where our kind of bass sound is coming from. Let's play that now. We're getting this sort of like um, sort of spectral bass synth that's coming in. You can see on oscillator two, we've got it set to the spectro smurf waveform. Unlike oscillator one, we've got the key scale set to on, so and that's set to the default position of 100, which means that it's going to follow the keyboard exactly as you would expect it to. So on oscillator two, we've still got the reset on, and we've still got it set to a single oscillator. We've got LFO G1, which is controlling the waveform. So it's on LFO G1, we've got that set to an eighth note and it's restarting every four bars just so it doesn't go out of sync with the kick. It's also set to a random hold. Um, so it's going to be changing whenever we hit uh, that kick. It's going to have a slightly different waveform, which is what's creating that sort of movement on it. You can just hear that kind of moving around a little bit. There we go, just making it a little bit more random. And then we've got the tuning set as well, because we want, although this is pitched, we still want it to have that kind of punchy kick type sound. And if we actually, we could have a listen to how it sounds on its own without oscillator one. So it's still got a little bit of kind of punchy kickness to it. So the final thing in the synthesis engine is this cross mod filter. So let's switch that on. So the cross mod filter is set to receive the signal from the same lane. So it's going to be receiving oscillator one and oscillator two. And then it's got a side chain from our second lane where we've got our decimated signal. Um, the decimated signal is also going to be coming straight out of lane two as well. So it's got a clean one coming through, but the cross mod kind of makes it a bit fatter and I'm going to turn it down here because it, is, it does make it quite loud. So let's try that without. So you can hear that's adding a lot of depth to it and a lot of that punch. So what we've got that set to, so we've got it set to LPF4 single and then an analog one here. We've got the cutoff set to just over halfway and that's also being controlled by envelope three, uh, which is the same as what the filter on the kick is being controlled by. Uh, we haven't got any resonance, haven't got any key follow. We've got the overload and the click on here. So let's just hear how what difference that's making. So let's remove the overload. So that's where a lot of that kind of punch is coming from. It'd be easy to kind of overdo it, but we don't want to do that. We want to have it kind of around a quarter there. And then let's hear the click as well. So that's just giving us a little bit of click on that attack there, which is giving us a little bit of extra punch. So that's the main part of the sound. Um, we've also got a little delay on here, which we can switch back on. So you can hear that already. We've got that set to stereo two with a fair bit of feedback and we've got it filtered quite a lot. And then we've got the rhythm set to half note and a dotted eighth note, um, which is just adding a little bit of extra character into the sound. Although of course, if you didn't want that in your patch, you can remove it either by deactivating the unit or you could leave it activated and just turn the mix down. So the only thing left to look at is that sort of strange glitchy rhythmical noise thing that was coming in on the mod wheel. 
So that's being controlled over here by the matrix. And you can see that what we've got, the target is set to return one and return two, which is over here, that's our buses. So they're being controlled by LFO G2, which let's scroll down over here. LFO G2 is set to sync to quarter notes and it restarts after two bars, again, to kind of keep it in sync. Again, we've got the waveform set to random hold. So that's then being controlled by the mod wheel. So it's not active unless our mod wheel is on. So let's just open the mod wheel. So it kind of adds this sort of, you know, it's quite an unusual glitchy noise element to the patch. Um, the idea by adding that to the mod wheel was that you can kind of create these rhythmic differences and you can you're not necessarily going to want it obviously all the way through your track but you can bring it in and out a little bit or you can kind of sample the rhythm and you because it's randomized it's never the same twice so you could play it a few times record it as it is and then find one where you've got this kind of rhythm that you like um so over on our effects channel so let's have a look at what that's doing let's remove the main feed so that we can just focus on our buses here Okay, so you can hear that's incredibly random and we've still got the kick coming through every now and then. Um, the LFO G2 is controlling both of these effects lanes. So we are getting the feed from lane, from the uh, bus one, sorry, and from bus two as well. You can see we've already got the reverb set to on, on bus one. And we've got our sends coming. Uh, so we've got the send from the main feed all the way up and then to send two, which is this one we've got that just over halfway. So we're getting that reverby sound. It's quite a big reverb that's being brought in and out by the LFO G2. And then we've got VCF5, so let's activate that. And on that, we've got the decimate again. So let's play that. So we get a lot more kind of crunchy there. Be careful when you're playing about with the cutoff on the decimate because it is easy to kind of overdo it. With a patch like this, you just want a little bit of flavor of that kind of uh, decimated bit crushed character. Um, and you don't want too much. You don't want it to get too noisy. So careful what you do with that. I've got it set to 100 on here. If you want it to go a bit more lo-fi, you could bring it down. but I'm going to have it at 100. Okay, so then we've got VCF6, and that's controlling low-pass old drive with the cutoff set to about two-thirds, a little bit of resonance, no drive and no key follow. So that's just going to take the edge off of that decimate. There we go. It's a bit more kind of gritty low-end now. Not quite so bright. Although, of course, if you did want that bright sound of that, you could just remove the VCF6 there and you would just get that kind of toppy crushed sound. So, but for this, we'll switch it back on. We've then got a little bit of EQ, just taking the bottom end out of it because I didn't want it to be too kind of muddy. Um, so it's leaving it, it's cutting about 8 dB out below um, sort of the 1K mark and leaving the top in. go that's removing quite a bit of that low end so it's just not quite as muddy and then we've got our mix 5 here let's activate that so mix 5 is getting a direct feed from the main channel that's set to the same input but we're also getting a feed from here so we're getting that reverb and that kind of uh, decimated sound as well and then that's set to 50 50 so that's a blend of the two sounds and then we've just got the new reverb on it which is a really nice reverb sound that makes it sound quite big we've got the decay set to quite high um, we've got damping quite high as well a reasonable amount of pre-delay fairly big size and the tone set quite high so we're getting this kind of toppy thing 
and you can now hear that it's also removed the depth from the kick that's coming into that as well so it's not got that kind of punch to it but it's just adding a little bit of um, ambience to the sound so let's bring back in our main feed and we've got our patch and let's bring in the mod wheel Okay, so there you have it. So uh, that was the patch machine learning. Thank you for watching the video. Hopefully you found it useful. Please do subscribe to my channel before you leave as I'm going to be posting more of these videos. If you would like to check out Automaton, it's a set of 100 patches all in this kind of um, gritty, lo-fi, robotic type style. It was inspired by the Tron Legacy score. And if you listen to that score, it's all full of kind of bit crushed and decimated sounds. Um, so check that out. There's a link to the product page in the description below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.